This video contains spoilers for season 1 of the Netflix show Kingdom. Kingdom is a 2019 South Korean historical horror series currently streaming on Netflix. The show is directed by Kim Seong Hoon and written by Kim Eun Hee, based on the webcomic series The Kingdom of the Gods, authored by Yoon Hee and illustrated by Yang Kyung Il. It is set three years after the Japanese invasion of the Korean Peninsula of 1592 to 1598. The Koreans have fought a war to expel the Japanese and the country is still recovering. However, the political, economic and intellectual elites continue to live lives of luxury while the poor are so hungry that some have resorted to eating their dead neighbors who have died of starvation. The show opens just after the death of the Joseon king. The highest ranking government official, Lo Cho Hak Ju, and his daughter, the king's young pregnant queen, are vying for power from the illegitimate crown prince, Lee Chang, who is next in line for the throne. Their plan is to call in a physician to perform a ritual that will bring the king back to life until the queen can give birth to what they hope will be a son who will have a better claim to the throne than Prince Chang. However, there's a catch. The king does not come back to life his old self. During the day, he sleeps like a corpse, but as soon as the sun sets, he awakes as a bloodthirsty zombie. Each night, the queen and Lord Cho feed him young women whose corpses are then snuck out of the palace in the morning. All seems to be going according to plan until the physician's assistant makes the mistake of getting too close to the king. The zombie king mauls him and he ends up dying. When his body is returned to his home village for burial, someone decides that it would be better to cook and eat him. This results in everyone becoming infected with a disease that turns them into bloodthirsty zombies that attack and maul other people at night, but take shelter from the sun during the day. The ruling elite do not make the difficult choices necessary to contain the disease, and so it slowly starts to spread across the whole country. I only started watching Kingdom this past month and I was so taken aback by its similarities to the current COVID-19 pandemic that the world is going through. For starters, the outbreak in the show is caused by political elites that want to consolidate power for themselves. This is eerily similar to what caused our current pandemic. According to Dr. Peter Lee, Associate Professor of East Asian Politics at the University of Houston downtown, the current COVID-19 pandemic came to be because of the wildlife trading lobby group in China that pressurized the government to decriminalize the farming and trading of wild animals. Dr. Lee says that this is an industry that caters to a very small minority of the Chinese population and contributes a very small fraction to China's annual GDP. The Chinese people who eat wildlife do so not as staples in their diet, but rather as a status symbol. The industry also preys on those who use the wild animal parts for medicinal purposes, many of which are unfounded. This industry may be small in comparison to China's other industries, but it exerts significant influence on the government and has put the entire world's population at risk on at least two occasions. In 2003, there was an outbreak of SARS that was traced back to a wet market in the city of Fujian in China's Guangdong province. The SARS pandemic reportedly killed close to 800 people around the world. Scientists found traces of the virus in farm civet cats, a delicacy in some parts of China, and the Chinese government closed wet markets and banned wildlife farming. As a result of the wildlife lobby group, this ban was incrementally lifted a few months later, and by 2004, it was business as usual. That is, until earlier this year. Shortly after the outbreak of COVID-19, thousands of Chinese wet markets were closed and a temporary ban was placed on wildlife farming and trading. This outbreak has already killed over 4,500 people in China. There are numerous international organizations that are calling for a permanent ban on wildlife training in China, and Chinese social media has been flooded with petitions to also permanently ban wildlife trading. In response, the Chinese government is allegedly revising its wildlife protection law that made wildlife farming possible back in the 1980s. It is not only Chinese elites that have exacerbated the problem in their country. Economic and political elites in Western countries like Spain, Italy, Britain and the United States have made poor choices that have had a devastating impact on the rest of their populations. In Spain, for example, thousands of people were allowed to attend a rally against gender inequality and gender-based violence on the 8th of March, 
Women specifically were strongly encouraged by Spain's Vice President Carmen Calvo to attend the rally because their lives depended on it. There are reports that some protesters were holding up signs that read, Machismo kills more than coronavirus. It is important to point out that the current women's rights movement in Spain is an important political force that has achieved many successes, like the recent passing of a bill that classifies all non-consensual sex as rape. On the same day that the women's rights rally was happening, Spain's right-wing political party Vox held a rally in Madrid where over 9,000 people were exposed to the virus in an enclosed space. This is in addition to numerous concerts and sporting events that were allowed to go ahead as planned. The Spanish media, politicians and government officials reassured the public that the virus did not pose any threat. This included the country's director of the Coordination Center for Health Alerts and Emergencies. All of this has resulted in close to 25,000 COVID-19 cases in Spain thus far. Given all the data that was available in early March surrounding the coronavirus and the experiences of other countries, particularly in Asia, the actions of the Spanish government in other countries like Spain were irresponsible, to say the least. This irresponsible behavior can be compared to how the ruling elites in Kingdom's Josian society reacted to the zombie pandemic that was sweeping across their country. After the first night of attacks from zombies in the city of Dongnai, it is made clear to the magistrate of the city that the sleeping bodies hiding from the sun must either be burnt or decapitated. However, this is a society that has great respect for the dead and corpses cannot be desecrated as they need to be kept whole for when the spirit of the person goes over to the land of the dead after burial. The aristocrats make it very clear to the magistrate who happens to be their social inferior, that he will not dare touch the dead bodies of their family members. It is only after Prince Lee comes onto the scene that the aristocrats back down. However, because of a lack of resources and manpower, the magistrate and the aristocracy of Dongnai decide to abandon the initial plan of burning all the zombie bodies and escape on the only ship available, leaving the peasants to fend for themselves against the zombies at night. This made me think of how India's Prime Minister announced his country's lockdown four hours before it was to take effect on the 23rd of March. This left millions of poor and working class Indians no other choice but to walk hundreds of kilometers from the country's cities to their home villages in the countryside. It is important to point out that the peasants who ate the infected body at the beginning of the show would not have resorted to this act of desperation if the aristocrats had simply shared the country's resources with them. The pandemic would not have happened if the ruling elite had acted responsibly. The most tense moment of Kingdom comes in the final episode of the first season. The story builds up to a final standoff between our heroes and the army of zombies. The protagonists prepare the defenses of the capital of Gyeongsang province and brace themselves for a long night of fighting. They spend the entire night standing guard, rifles, spears, swords and fire arrows at the ready. Some of the soldiers wait on makeshift boats because the zombies hate water, and others are on the battlements of walls. However, the fight does not happen. Autumn is turning to winter, and no one realizes that it is not the sun that the zombies hide from during the day, but the high temperatures. After the sun rises, it is still very cold, so the zombies come running out of the morning mist, and it is clear that they have spent the night attacking smaller towns and villages around the city, and their numbers are going to overwhelm the city's defenses. The novel coronavirus may very well cause this to happen to us in the real world. In my home country, South Africa, our national lockdown started on the 27th of March and has resulted in a low rate of infection. Over 10,000 cases of COVID-19 and about 200 deaths were reported in South Africa during the making of this video. Our government has made a real effort to make responsible decisions to avoid large numbers of people dying unnecessarily. To help ordinary citizens understand different aspects of the lockdown, the Ministerial Advisory Committee Chairperson, Professor Salim Abdul Karim, gave a presentation to the nation on live television on the 15th of April. One of the big takeaways from this broadcast was that South Africa would open up after our average infection rate comes down to 90 cases per day. For the past four weeks, this number has been increasing. However, the government has decided to incrementally reopen the country, including operations of mines, factories and shops, and a planned reopening of schools in June. Our lockdown has bought us valuable time in South Africa. 
Some government departments use this time to plan for the reopening of the country better than others. Last week marked the first time in five weeks that lockdown restrictions have been eased and only time will tell if the BBC's sensational headline of the lull before the surge will be proven wrong. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Keep safe and stay at home if you can.